and uh, for the next topic maximize your cloud investments by microsoft commercial marketplace for this uh, ms nidhi will be sharing her thoughts and uh, ms nidhi hasija works with digital initiative digital natives product companies in india to co innovate co build on the cloud and engage in joint go to market strategies for their global business in microsoft can we have a huge round of applause for ms nidhi hasija a brief introduction on what uh, we do at microsoft and how we are working with each one of your offices to uh, empower you as well as your your stakeholders within the organizations which we heard in the previous presentation how to make it effective and possible to procure seamlessly digital cloud solution products that are available today in the market so me my a brief introduction i lead the business of as they said building software products on azure make sure those products are available to you to consume in a software as a service model so gone are the days when uh, organizations had huge huge it teams setting up setting up servers in their ecosystems building lot of products in house grounds up and spending uh, sdlc when i studied technology computer science there was an sdlc life cycle of 18 to 24 months that we used to do right gone are the those those days and today the model has shifted as we'll see in the presentation the model has shifted to a software as a service model where the focus is more on outcomes rather than uh, more on writing the lines of code so uh, can we have the presentation on so while they're coming up uh, the today's presentation focuses upon how we so as a consumer when i want to buy a shirt i today go online to purchase on a mintra or a flipkart right similarly b2b decision makers today want a digital commerce in place to go and procure so that they can identify the right solution which they want they can procure it they can deploy it digitally they can manage it and also govern it so when it goes to the end audience what is being used and how much is being used will give you an insight on what needs to be done and be procured in the next cycle right so the entire process if you are able to do digitally through a marketplace that is where the uh, procurement uh, ask is coming to us and has been coming to us so for the last 5 years we have been deploying and building this product which is today with you microsoft marketplace you want any help Okay, just a quick uh, check here. How many of us are um, using or helping your custom, your stakeholders use Azure here in the room? Anyone working with Azure, Microsoft, any format or shape? Okay, anyone? I'll make it more wider. Anyone using cloud procurement decisions, making cloud procurement decisions? Not much, is it? Okay. Like organizations using uh, what is what are the organizations today changing to? So, with the advent of generative AI, we saw two years back, one and a half years back, uh, Microsoft and we generative AI as a product. What has happened is the pace of innovation has accelerated even further. So the we were never imagined the work that AI could do for us, which is coming up in the innovative solutions that our businesses are deploying. And what it means for procurement is. being able to have all those solutions in one place and getting them procured digitally for building those innovative solutions for your end line of business solutions right and when your line of business says that i want to reduce the time to market and want to scale globally nationally regionally to meet the demand of my end customers what does it mean for you that the procurement has cycle has to be overall looked at the vendor onboarding cycle the supplier onboarding cycle has to be shortened it has to be made more efficient more efficient seamless for your team as well as flexibility of pricing and modeling what is available uh, for you as a uh, uh, persona is very important if you have that flexibility if you have the option to do it quickly what it means at the end your end consume uh, your end line of business is able to reduce its time to market to the end customer so a small fact today uh, the end businesses are uh, are 
deploying products and services at the scale of every 11 second a code is going online for almost all large organizations which are dealing with end consumers and products. So when your stakeholders are asking for a timeline so fast, how do you ensure that you procure at the same speed of time and also be able to do it conveniently, seamlessly with a data-driven point of view of getting it done? So reducing time to market is a very important point that you would be again and again being asking for the, uh, from your st stakeholders. Coming to productivity. So we say that we want to uh, Im improve the employee productivity, we want generative AI and all that, but what does it mean for procurement? Right? So from a productivity standpoint, we have seen shorting of supplier onboarding cycles, the procurement cycles from a marketplace perspective from six months to as good as less as two to three weeks time. So that is the productivity gains that we are looking at. Coming to managing security and compliance. Now imagine you product, procure a product for an organization of 10, 20,000 people or maybe even bigger displaced people sitting across the region having different workforces on the field as well as in the offices, how do you ensure that the products you procure are being used in the right fashion? And when they're being adopted, what is the outcome that is being coming forward, right? So managing security, compliance, and governance of these products, again, is a big challenge. The moment you com complete a purchase and keep that paper in a file somewhere, how do you ensure what is being used on the field, right? So when you come, the, the decision maker comes back to you after six months or 10 months, what insights do you have and how was that purchased? So if you look at what are the numbers that we see, it is shocking. So just look at, uh, this is the last year now, 2023, end of 2023, these numbers were published. They were, more than 70% organizations were using AI in last year itself, right? Out of which 58% was the growth of software as a service products, annualized growth rate, right? And out of it, 32% investments were being wasted. So the sprawl is so much, the IT sprawl, the spend is so much, what is getting used is, is not being measured. And that is the, in the previous session we heard, what is the data decision point, or what is the skill that we bring as professionals is what needs to be, uh, be an ROI from a consumption standpoint once you procure. Right? That is the view that we are looking at, and this is going to increase. So in, by 2025, the SaaS will be multifold up SaaS products, and most more than 85% of business needs will be fulfilled by software as a service product. Now, what does it mean? The wastage will increase even further. So if we are losing out 50% 50, 50 of our spend on wastage of what we are procuring, then, then that is not the way we want to be. And to so, so the solution that we propose and what most of the big conglomerates, big user houses already are using in India, globally obviously the adoption has been much, much faster way ahead of time. But in India, if you look at all the Microsoft enterprise top customers, marketplace is the product, marketplace is the way, means of procurement that the, that the uh, businesses are using today. So what is a lot of effort going into it from our side, we are investing hugely into our partner ecosystem. So what we do is we build, First, firstly we ensure what is the need of the business, what is the use case, it is, is it a supply chain uh, use case, is it a contract life cycle management use case, is it a procure to pay use case, is it a HRMS use, uh, a human resource management system use case, loan management, any, any business, what is the use case. Thousands of use cases we build with our partners on top of Azure, make it available as a one system to you so that you don't need to have to individually go to every level and manage contracts. We publish it on Microsoft Marketplace as a vetted solution for you. We engage with you, my, my teams engage with you on the procurement life cycle. Once you purchase, so once you purchase, we help you de deploy it digitally. And we also remain throughout if there are any issues or channels. So you don't have to go to a partner separately and ask what happened. Hey, you sold this product to me 10, 10, 10 months back. I, I'm stuck. This is not working. This, this service is not being delivered. So the products and services are there on a marketplace for you to look at, evaluate, and purchase as per the negotiated prices will come to the pricing also. And then also adopt it correctly in the organization. 
okay? And, uh, and what does it do for you is, uh, obviously we talked about increasing the efficiency and buying with confidence. So you have, you don't need to go to the extra 10 miles to say, do a supplier agreement. You will already have an Azure agreement, suppliers, uh, the uh, supply, the purchase and the complete terms of payment, everything worked out with Azure. You buy with that with confidence. You spend smarter. You identify where you want to spend in what quantity. And you can shift the budgets, make it flexible as per your needs, and you do that. So that is the whole idea of marketplace. And coming to what does it, individual features that come to it. So maximizing value. What happens is that if you commit a dollar amount to any purchase, right? Now, where does that dollar amount land into? Every product and service that you build for your end business will have multiple components to it, right? So how do you maximize across the complete stack of components is what you can do through a marketplace purchase. You can create a private view for yourself and do all that management yourself. Private offers. So. Uh, while buying a shirt is very simple because it's a small decision to make, when you spend budget, it's a six, seven digit minimum budget that you are spending. So you cannot say that what is available directly off the shelf, I'll go and purchase, right? And almost 99% of purchases are not happening for large capex, opex for you, right? So that for that, these are private, ready-made custom offers that you can have. Our partners build those for you. We give it to you on the uh, on the terms and conditions that you negotiate with the partners, and you can accept that and deploy it. So that brings the additional uh, additional value of getting what you are spending money for. Thirdly, uh, you safeguard these investments going forward as well. So oh, what happens is when you there is a, some a concept called of there is a concept called Mac, Microsoft budgets that you are spending with us. So around three, four years back, what was the trend was that we used to suffice point in time uh, requirements, procurement needs for our customers. But over the time, what has happened as the budgets are consolidating, the our top enterprise customers have been asking for commitment suspense. So what happens is almost all our enterprise customers today I have committed spends for three year, five year horizons with us. That being said, what happens is any software purchase you do on Azure Marketplace can add up or can decrement your committed spend with Microsoft Azure by 100%. So that is a, even a, a cherry on the top for you. You do a committed spend, you get all the incentives, all the resources from Microsoft pooled into a committed spend for Microsoft. And then for partners and the products that are hosted on Microsoft Marketplace, when you go and purchase them, even not a Microsoft first party product, you go and purchase it, those products will also help you retire these commitments. So it is a single view of entire budget. It's a, it's a easy way of shifting the budgets between different categories and taking a bigger leadership view of how you are spending a cloud budget for you year after year, right? And which category is it going into? So that is a very beautiful solution that we offer. Um, so if you see, there's been, in the last two years we have been tracking this, there's two 30% increase of direct digital sales on marketplace since we have put complete effort behind it. 100% we are focusing on marketplace as a solution today. And 100%, but there's a 100% increase in customers who are shifting to committed cloud spends, get, getting a better TCO, better ROI of committing a budget on cloud. And then 100% of your sales are going towards this commitment, just giving you not only the discounts and incentives from Microsoft, any third party that is going and selling to you, negotiating a separate add-on discount with you, those can also come under these discounted commitments for you. So that is the overall package that we have. There's a lot of details into it, how you can use it, how you can make it custom to your organization so that when your employees use your solution, procured solutions, how do they comply to it, what all they can take, not take from a marketplace. All that can be configured in the product. We can go deeper into it, but I'll leave it at here. I'll not go detailed. This is a sample image of what you see on a marketplace. You see a flag there as well on thousands of products that you see, which are committed products, which once you buy, you can benefit. You have a double benefit to buy them under the commitments. And you can go in detail of that as well. 
I'm just leaving you with a thought. While we all want to innovate, while we all want to reach to the moon, there's definitely a control fight side of it. How we as decision makers bring in control for our organizations is also very important, while still not uh, limiting innovation. So with that in mind, let's keep the balance going and looking forward to engaging more in the session. Thank you so much.